types of joint and joint movement. There are five specific synovial joints that we are going to look into in a bit more detail. These are split into two types of joints, the hinge joint and the ball and socket joint. The elbow, knee and ankle are all types of hinge joints. The shoulder and hip are types of ball and socket joints. The hinge joints are found in the knee, elbow and ankle. They are called hinge joints because they are similar to a hinge of a door. They can only flex and extend like a door can open and close. The two types of movement available at a hinge joint are flexion and extension, although this is called something slightly different for the ankle joint. At the knee and elbow, when flexion occurs, the joint is bent and the angle between the bones decreases. At the knee and elbow joint, when extension occurs, the joint is straight and the angle between the bones increases. The ankle is a hinge joint and has slightly different names for its range of movement. When the toes are pointing down, this is called plantar flexion. When the toes are pointed upwards, this is called dorsiflexion. Can you think of any sports where these movements would occur a lot? Let's see if we can describe the movement happening at some of the hinge joints on the first athlete performing karate. Look at the right elbow of the first athlete. It is bent at the hinge joint. This means the movement occurring is flexion. Look at the left elbow of the athlete. It is straight at the hinge joint. This means the movement occurring is extension. Look at the left knee of the athlete. It is slightly bent at the hinge joint. That means the movement occurring is flexion. Look at the left ankle of the athlete. His toes are not pointed downwards. This means the movement occurring is dorsiflexion. Can you have a go at identifying the movement of the hinge joints on a second athlete? The ball and socket joints are found in the shoulders and the hips. The ball and socket joints allow for the greatest amount of movement compared to the other joints. A ball and socket joint is made up of the round end of a bone that fits into a dip of another bone. The ball and socket joint has the most range of movement and can perform six types of movement. Similar to the hinge joint, the ball and socket joint can perform both flexion and extension. Flexion is when the arm or leg is brought forwards and upwards. The distance between the ball and socket decreases. Whereas extension is where the arm or leg is brought backwards. The distance between the ball and the socket increases. The ball and socket joint can also perform the movement abduction and adduction. Abduction is where the body parts move away from the midline of the body. For example, when bringing the arms away from the body when performing a star jump. You could remember it by thinking the arms and legs are abducted away from the body. Adduction is the opposite. Adduction means movement towards the midline of the body. For example, when the arms and legs come back towards the body during a star jump. You could remember it by the arms and legs are adding to the body. The ball and socket joint can also perform the movement rotation and circumduction. Rotation is where the arm or leg will turn around its long axis. For example, a dancer may rotate at the hips to turn their feet outwards. Circumduction is the full 360 degree circular movement at the joint. For example, a cricketer would use circumduction at their shoulder joint when bowling the ball. Let's see if we can describe the movement happening at the ball and socket joints on the gymnast. Look at the shoulders. They are both doing the same movement, which is bringing the arms slightly forward in front of the body. This means the movement occurring at the shoulders 
is flexion. Look at the hips. Both the right and left hip are doing the same movement, which is bringing the legs away from the body to the side split position. This means the movement that is occurring at the hips is abduction. Here is a summary of the range of movement available at the joints. The knee and elbow have exactly the same type of movement. They can both flex and extend, but they cannot move through any other range of movement. The ankle joint is a hinge joint, but does move slightly differently. The ankle joint moves through plantar flexion and dorsiflexion, but does not move through any other range of movement. The shoulder and the hips are both ball and socket joints and move in exactly the same way. They can move through flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, rotation and circumduction. They cannot move through plantar flexion or dorsiflexion. Today's key words. Hinge joint, located at the elbow, knee and ankle and only allows for flexion and extension. Ball and socket joint, located at the hips and shoulders and is a joint that has the greatest range of movement. Flexion, the bending at a joint. Extension is the straightening at a joint. Plantar flexion is a movement at the ankle when the toes are pointed down. Dorsiflexion is a movement at the ankle when the toes are pointed up. Abduction is a movement of the limbs, which are the arms and legs, away from the midline of the body. This only occurs at a ball and socket joint. Adduction is a movement of the limbs, arms and legs, towards the midline of the body. This only occurs at a ball and socket joint. Rotation is the turning or pivoting of a joint within its socket. This movement only occurs at a ball and socket joint. Circumduction is the full 360 degree circular movement at a joint. This movement only occurs at a ball and socket joint.